Hi Algebra 2, this is Unit 3, Lesson 8, and today we're going to talk about solving absolute value inequalities and also system of equations. So absolute value inequalities, there's two different scenarios that we have to look at. One if we have the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 5, and one if we have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5. When I have the greater than sign, that's an or situation. In an or situation, I set that equal to x greater than or equal to 5 or x less than or equal to negative 5. Because remember, the absolute value of a number is, absolute value of a negative number is positive, so, and the absolute value of a positive number stays positive. So basically, x is greater than or equal to 5, okay, so at 5, right here. Well, I'm going to draw the line. Uh, y equals 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so this line right there, okay, and you can see where it is equal to 5 and negative 5, okay, and I want to know when it's greater than negative 5, so that's in this direction, I'm sorry, greater than 5 is in this direction, and less than or equal to negative 5 is in this direction, that's what it looks like on the graph. Okay, so at 5 and negative 5, it's equal. So I am including those numbers 5 and negative 5. If I was looking at it on a number line, so at 5 and anything greater, and at negative 5 and anything less than that. If I was writing it in interval notation, anything less than negative 5, so I'm including the negative 5, and I go all the way to infinity, negative infinity, or I would go from positive 5 to positive infinity. If I was writing it in inequality notation, it's just x less than or equal to negative 5 or x greater than or equal to 5. So greater than with an inequality is an or situation. A less than with an inequality is an and situation. So basically it's going to be x less than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to negative 5 at the same time. So again, if I graph that line y equals 5, I'm talking about these points here, but instead I'm talking about everything between those two points. So everything that I've highlighted in orange. If I'm looking at a number line, I'm including negative 5. I'm including 5 because those equal signs are there, and it's everything between. So this is an and situation everything between negative 5 and 5. And if I, I already wrote this up top, but I'll write it again right here. Basically, x is less than or equal to 5, and x is greater than or equal to negative 5 at the same time. So in a less than situation, this that's an and. Okay, so less than, change it to a different color, is an and situation, and greater than is an or situation. All right. I'm actually going to skip exercise one, all right, and we're just going to look at some graphs. First, we're going to do something solving it algebraically, and then I'm going to look at some graphs, and then we're going to do those systems of equations that I was talking about. So we'll skip exercise one right there. We're going to move right to exercise two. I want to solve this algebraically, okay? This is a less than um, situation. So less than, remember, was the and. And what I do is I take the x minus 2 and I keep it as less than 3 and I also make it greater than negative 3, the opposite. So you can think of this as solving all three sides of the inequality at the same time. It's like I have two different equations going on, one on the left and one on the right. So I'll add 2, but I'm going to add 2 to the right and I'm also going to add 2 to the left. And that would be my answer right there. Okay, see how I can do that all at once? So that is choice D. When I'm solving a system of equations graphically, it's pretty easy because you can just look for the point of intersections. So the point of intersection for A is here and here. And you would just write those two, you know, two points of intersection. So I got negative 2, negative 3, and then I have 0, 1. Done. 
So I have a parabola in a line on A. On B, I have a circle in the line, but it's still just two points of intersection. And I'm just going to list those two points of intersection. So I have 2, 0, and I have 0, 2. And the last one right here. Again, I have um, my points of intersection are down here at negative 1, negative 5, and up here at 4, 0. So it's definitely easy when the graph is already drawn for us. If it's not drawn for us, we just put it into my calculator. So I'm going to put into my calculator into y1. All right, I got two equations to put in, so I'm going to put them in as y1, y2. The first one is already perfect, 2x minus 1. The second one, I have to get y by itself, so I'm going to subtract that x and bring it over to the right. I have negative x plus 6, and I still have to get y by itself, so I'm dividing by 3. And basically, that leaves me with negative 1 third x plus 2. So those are my two equations that I put into my calculator. And then I can look at the graph, and then I'm going to hit second, calc, and then I go over to where it says intersect, and I hit enter and enter. So this is if you have a regular graphing calculator. All right. Um, the cal graphing calculator that I recommended that you use was not doing this, so I did download another app. Um, let me just find it right here. So it looks like right here, Graph and Calc 83, this all the way on the side right there. And again, I just put those into my 2x minus 1 is the first one. And negative 1 third. So now when I do the 1 third, I need parentheses, 1 divided by 3. Negative 1 third x plus 2. Okay, and I said I can hit the graph. And then my solution is up here right there if I click that. So those of you who are using a regular graph and calculator are just going to hit second, calc, intersect, enter, enter. Okay, but you can see right here I have my x coordinate is 1.285, so I'm going to make it 1.29 because it says to, my problem said to round it to the nearest hundredth. And my y coordinate is 1.57, and that's my answer. All right, I don't have to hit the second calc on this one. All right, so let's get out of there. Back to my screen. All right, so my answer for this, I'll do it in red, was 1.29 was my x, 1.57 was my y. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for exercise four. So I'm going to put these both into my graphing calculator. So absolute value, if you forgot how to do the absolute value, I have y equals the absolute value. So let me just erase these. Okay, so y equals absolute value of x. So I hit the math, and then I scoot over to num, that second one right there, and I hit absolute value. x is going in there. I go to the right, absolute value of x minus 4. That's the first equation. And then 4x minus 2 is the second equation. Okay, again, I hit graph. And you can see that my point of intersection is right there. My x is negative 0.4, and my y is negative 3.6. If you're using a graphing calculator, you're hitting second, calc, intersect, enter, enter, and it should give you the same numbers right there. All right, so let's get out of here. And... So this solution was negative 0.4 comma negative 3.6. All right, and the other thing I want to go over that you did back in um, Algebra 1 is a system of equations graphically. And this is important because this is what we're doing tomorrow. But tomorrow we're going to have three variables. We're going to have x, y, and z. Right now I just have the two variables. So I can't solve an equation that has two variables. I need one of the variables to drop out. If you're looking at the coefficients though, see how this is three and two, and this is two and one? Those coefficients are not going to drop out the way that they are right there. But say that that y on the bottom also had a two in front of it, then I would be able to add them. So I'm going to multiply this whole bottom equation. I'm gonna leave the top equation. 
I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 2, so I'm getting negative 4x minus 2y equals 14. And then seeing how these are the same right here, when I go to add these equations together, those y's are going to drop out. You need one of them to drop out, and I chose the y's. I could have multiplied the x's to get those to have the same coefficient, but I chose not to. So the y's drop out. I have negative 1x equals negative, well, equals 5. And then to solve for x, I'm going to divide by negative 1. x equals negative 5. Okay? And then once you have one of the variables, then I'm just going to take that and substitute in. Sub in to find y. Either equation, it doesn't matter which one I use. Um, I'll use the 2x plus y equals negative 7. So again, x is negative 5. Negative 10 plus y equals negative 7. y equals 3. Okay, just, so to solve a system of equations, you need to get rid of one of the variables. And I do that by making the coefficients in front the same. So you might have to multiply the equation by something. You might have to multiply both equations to get the coefficients to be the same. And then you add or subtract those equations once the coefficients are the same. And you're down to one uh, variable. And you solve for that variable. And then you plug back in for the other one. So let's try number six, same thing. So first off, I need the x's and the y's sort of to line up. So let me fix that top one and have x plus y equals 1. And I'll leave the bottom one alone. Okay, now look at the coefficients. The x's are different. But the y's actually have the same coefficient. They have 1 and negative 1, which is perfect. So if I was to add these two together, I would get 4x. The y's would cancel out, and 1 plus 3 is 4. Once you solve for one of the variables, then you just go back in and substitute to solve for the other variable. And again, it doesn't matter which one you use. I'm just going to use the one that looks a little bit easier. So x is 1 y plus 1 is 1, so y equals 0. All right, so we're going to practice this tomorrow. You were going to do the same thing, but there's going to be